Hey guys, Chris back. Ironhead Garage. Well, I got my buddy coming over this morning, Ozzy Dave. He's going to come over here and uh, solder up my heater core, kick that to a copper. Got to use that special flux, a lot of flux, and a special solder. He's an AC guy, and so uh, he knows what he's doing with that. I don't want it to blow off and leak. So he'll be coming over pretty soon. See if we can get him on film, see if he's all right with that. I'm sure he will be. So uh, we'll wait a little bit until he comes on over and we'll get some soldering done and get them headers on there. All right, guys. I'll be back. Hey, got my buddy Dave over here to help me solder this uh, pipe up. How's it going, Dave? Cool. Doing really well. So we're just trying to uh, get some brazing going so Chris can have some heat in his radiator right here. So just experimenting with what he's got in the garage and so what I brought. So we're using what I call American solder. Not like in Australia where we actually use silk floss and braze copper with silk floss. So those Australian guys would understand. But in this type of solder, it uh, doesn't take much heat. It's a typical uh, just flux and uh, basically like tin is the way I look at it. But anyway, we're just going to uh, start getting all this uh, prepped and uh, make it so it's sealed. Normally when I like to braise these, because I ain't the perfect guy at it, you know, but is that I like to have the cup up, so that way when I'm putting in the salt, this type of solder, it's just this little, this curly type stuff, you know, I've seen it down in the hardware store, they all sell it there, or any plumbing wholesaler. But as you put too much heat on with your turbo torch, this is all you need, it's just a good old fashioned turbo torch, as you heat it up and you start putting the solder on there, it'll just suck right down into the bottom of the cup. If you put too much heat at the top, it won't flow. So when you're heating it up, basically heating, heating the cup itself. The reason I like it up, I'm an old fashioned guy with sulfur floss. I like to have a little shoulder on there to make sure it's sealed. And so I just regulate my heat, make the solder come around. We'll show you on the next step when we get to the next elbow. We're doing it a little bit by little bit. Thanks, Dave. All right, here we are at the last stage. So Chris and I got together on the old uh, vice there as we were chatting, flapping our gums away. Uh, we brazed, pre-brazed all the uh, joints up, and now we're just uh, coming to the point of doing the last joint into the heater box itself. So the unfortunate situation that's going on is that we've got copper, copper coming out of the bottom, and then we've got aluminum uh, or aluminium for some people. Uh, coming out of the top. So they brought copper to the actual diverting valve because it's more solid and can take the heat a little bit better. But even though it is an aluminum uh, uh, heater core there. So we're going to use different. We're going to use the typical plumber's uh, soft solder on, on this joint here. But on this aluminum, let's talk about aluminum to copper. And there's many very uh, subjects on, on that uh, situation. Now, normally when you're brazing copper to aluminum, it's a, it's a difficult uh, joint, you've got to use the correct solder. So then we're using the, the All Solder 500, you can buy it online, it's about 20 bucks for a little container. Comes with a secret flux source in here, with a little dabber going on. Uh, I make sure that the, the surfaces are super clean in the copper inside. Cleanliness is the king here. If you don't have cleanliness, it's got a piece of dirt, the solder will not bond to the metals. So part of it too is that on copper, you want the copper on the inside of the aluminum. Now some people put it on the outside, but the difference is, is that the bonding between the aluminum and the copper will actually bond a little bit better when the copper is on the inside. Now, when you're brazing uh, uh, copper to aluminum, aluminum, of course, melting point is a lot higher than, uh, sorry, copper is a lot higher than aluminum. And so what we're getting to do is that if we just started using the good old turbo torch in here, and we start, you know, flaming up on the, on the actual uh, aluminum on the outside, the aluminum will get hot quick but then the copper, because it's more dense material, then the molecules are more denser in copper than they are with aluminum. The aluminum heat up and you start heating the aluminum up so hot 
that will start carbonizing. And once you start carbonizing, the solder, which is aluminum solder here, with the flux, will actually not bond to the two different metals. So what we're going to do, we're going to heat up the copper first, and I'm, I'm going to feather it. I'm going to feather the heat. I'm going to try and, of course, try not to burn his fire well, but also uh, just to keep the heat on the copper. And then as, I, as I'm actually, I'll put the wrong solder, as I'm actually heating it up, I'm going to be just whispering, I call it whispering, or stroking the actual solder over the joint. And then once it starts melting, I'm going to bring the flame back feather just to maintain the heat because if you keep your heat pouring away as you're trying to solder, you're just going to go past the melting point and it's not going to bond and it'll start the carbonization. So it's all about control of your actual flame. So we're going to feather it back. So let's give it a whirl and see uh, if we can get this going. So you see, I'll heat it all the way around. Not concentrating on one area. Soldered, I should have probably put a rag around it and uh, kept that joint uh, nice and cool. But what I'll do on the next po point here, I'm going to finish brazing this, but I'll put a rag around this area, keeping it cool so I don't get too much heat into the firewall. And then I'll just quickly uh, braze that back up there. So we'll continue on. I'm going to put a little bit more flux on here because as you heat it up, the flux cleans up the solder. Now you look at that joint now, once we started putting the, uh, the flux on here, which is like an acid, just cleans it all up, suddenly all that dirt and carbon all cleaned up and you can actually kind of see the actual joint there. Looks nice and neat and kind of clean, but being as anal as I am, I try to put a little bit more. You probably have enough solder on there, but I'm just going to give it one more little melting beautifully in there. You see it sort of going on and off. But. I don't have to go full bore. And it looks like it's all joint just beautifully. Put a little flux on there to make that look pretty. And Chris doesn't have to sit there scrubbing it with his pad to make it look beautiful as he always does. Great job, Dave. All right, so now we'll get back to the old plumber's solder and see if we can make this look pretty and correct for him. It looks like uh, we finally all got it done together and put together for Chris to hook up his uh, hoses to. So we just did the normal soft solder uh, that you can buy at the hardware store, but the actual uh, aluminum solder is a specialty one that you're gonna have to buy at the stores, or online, I should say. Uh, that one, all uh, 500, is a good one. It's an aluminum solder. There is different types. You can get the aluminum stick solder. You can use the long stick ones. Yeah, they work okay. Um, sometimes they pull up a little bit more. Uh, you can get the ones with the aluminum with a uh, flux around core on the outside. I'm a little old fashioned. I like the flux on the stick. It lubricates. It's easy to put on there, it doesn't go on in globs and stuff like that, and it takes more heat to the thing. So, we've got a really nice uh, aluminum to copper joint there. Chris is going to be extremely happy when it's cold out and he's doing burnouts on the uh, on the pavement there. Yeah, and, buddy. And the heater going, so, and uh, he's just going to make a little bracket to make it a, a little bit more uh, firm because it is hard copper. If it was soft copper, it would probably flex with the, the, the vehicle like a hose in a sense, has a little bit more give, but this is hard, what we call hard drawn copper, 
some people dear me a lot with the oxyacetylene torch, but he's going to do a beautiful little bracket. It's going to look gorgeous. He's going to polish it up. It's going to be almost steampunk-like looking, you know, on the, on the back fender wall. So it's going to be pretty cool. So it's going to be an awesome ride. Chris is doing fantastic on this. Of course, like the rest of you, we've, we've been watching. Very excited for him. And can't wait to see him fucking burn rubber. <laughs> <laughs> right on, Dave. I appreciate you coming over, brother. Take care. See you, mate. See you guys. Have a good evening. Take care. Thanks for watching, guys.